how to battle our nafs, do your zikr, do your practices, do the energies, the whole path is the how. There's no one thing, it's everything. So don't, don't mix and match, you know, don't, don't take something from here, mix something from there. Is that use every single step that the shaykh is saying. That you have to walk in their way and they're not saying anything they didn't do. They're only allowed to teach you what they have done and what they do. And as a result what opened for them is exactly why they give that formula out. Because they reach where they have to reach and Allah send them back, now bring people on your way, the way that you enacted and the way that you took your path. Because you can't teach what you don't have and you can't teach what you don't know. So for 30 years of doing this and through all the testings and everything, this is the system. And this is a, a medical office when your hands are shaking means that you, the lack of faith is the danger until the people run. We said before when I first opened the door in Vancouver, I say, a day will come that if you imagine sitting in this room, we'll shut the doors and we'll say, don't open the door, something is outside of a horrific nature. And many of you will open the door and run because you don't have a belief that with what the shaykh is saying is your safety, right? Because many will say, no he doesn't know what he's talking about, I know what's good because we don't know who's sitting on the chair. <coughs> if the shaitan is sitting on the chair of people which is the majority, doesn't matter if they're sitting in zikr or wherever they are on this earth, that shaitan and nafs is continuously figuring out how we're going to destroy this relationship with the shaykh. So that we are never taken off of this chair and the person doesn't even know the intention. They think, no I don't have any bad intentions and no you don't even know what your intentions are. But your nafs and shaitan do and they know how they'll get you there and how they'll whisper to you and chisel away at your faith uh, one chisel at a time until you drop off and you're not seen anymore by the group because your nafs and shaitan got you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And now forbid you, so many many before <clears throat> but the system that they teach has to be done step by step, every aspect of what's being taught so that they can reach to that power. There is no one thing that will save anything, it's everything that has to be done, the entire belief system, the practices, the energy, the connection, everything inshaAllah. <coughs> Positive comments, Sayyidi. Uh, as salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. The analogy of the chair uh, is a mind opening reality. When I find myself in a difficult situation, the analogy helps me imagine the chair and the one sitting upon. Thank you so much. Most welcome. So that should be a very strong analogy because anytime we act a certain way, stop and say, Who's sitting on the chair? When you're about to get angry, when you're doing something, when you're commenting, when you're thinking in the zawiyah and you're, you oh, uh, should I get that, not get that, who's sitting on the chair at that time? Your soul is willing to die for Allah 
So know that your soul is not sitting on the chair. Then you'll realize, no, no, it's my nafs and shaitan that blocking everything. I can come to a fountain and I can leave with nothing from that fountain. Shame on that person like that, that they come to the fountains of reality and they left empty handed. That's not the faith. So that's what's trying to be taught and the teaching. So we said these things are going to collapse, make sure you have money at home. When things start to collapse and you start getting emails, she got lost everything, everything closed. Well where were you? Why, why you didn't hear what was being told to you? Why did you think it was a joke? No who was joking. So this is the guidance, these are the realities of guidance and the sadness of listening to people who didn't listen to guidance. The dangers of that, that you're to have gold and silver and cash at home and uh, things are going to happen upon this earth and you should have food and supplies and you should be living a life and how am I going to get more barakah? If I don't have that barakah then what's going to bring food to my mouth and to my family's mouth? You think it's your savings account? and your Apple shares that you invested in? No, but the account that hisab that you have with Allah Some people saving so much to go buy a home or buy something, it could be one shot, you know anything over your 250 will be eaten by the banks. And they come back and say, sorry we only insured up to this amount. And it's not even an insurance company, it's a good faith promise. <laughs> So it's horrible, horrible, horrible reality is coming upon this earth. But this is also the reality of Ramadan that Allah said, I'm going to wash away all your sins. If your sins are dunya, we wash them away. If your sins are the, the bad character, I wash it away. But to see that once Allah washes what's left, if we had faith then the soul should be shining. Because Allah destroyed all of its dunya and left for it a soul that's shining. But if the person didn't build the soul and Allah destroyed, what's left? Nothing. Ash to ash and dust to dust and there was but nothing left because nothing was built. So these are the days of, of requiring immense faith. So that's when we ask that, please watch the videos, take the notes, study the notes. Even leave comments in the videos on YouTube because we go back and our people will be reading, myself will be reading that you're understanding, you're making your effort, it's good for the algorithm of the videos. And other people coming new are watching and making comments and, and are interacting. And the communities, we said that the Spanish people are logging on and you see the Spanish names and they're putting in comments, so alhamdulillah for those people who took the time to spread those videos to the Spanish forums and, and, and the, the foreign language forums because then you get all of these people are coming in. So alhamdulillah this is a good sign that people to take their effort and take the guidance with, with their heart because following your heart and following these realities there's no downside, it's only up. Because whatever you believe even it didn't happen Allah raises your darajat. But if what He said is true and it does come, you are saved from a, a great difficulty, a great difficulty inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, the different veils you spoke about when we make a mistake and fall low with repentance, do we get back at the same veil as before? Please forgive our bad adab. Yeah, I think that was also for people to understand that they like the elevator going up and going down. You're on the lobby, Allah wants you to elevate, go to the higher floors because the one who goes from the higher floor he can see all the floors, right? Because you go to the penthouse of the, the office building, you can see the entire city. Means you have access to all of the maqams. But shaitan is not happy with that. So what does shaitan keep doing? 
is to bring bad character and say, what go up on taking you to the parking lot? Down and you're going to go down, down, down and each level down different demons are entering in and they've been waiting for people and they sing in their songs, we've been waiting for you, we knew that you'd be coming. So this is an immense difficulty that and your tawbah it lift you to the lobby. If you make your istighfar and make all of your practices and you try your best to go back to the lobby and to go up. So Allah gave a system in which to make your, your maqfirah and asking for forgiveness. The Ramadan is an immense opening of rahmah, opening of maqfirah, opening of itqul minan nar of freedom from fire. Again to take everybody who went too low, Allah bring them back up to their, their lobby and to be at the, the level where they're supposed to be to go upwards. And those whom are up they begin to drop their darajat with every sinful action, they go down. They make their istighfar, they make their, their tawbah, they make their practices and one great blessing for the nation is Salatul Jummah. That Salatul Jummah is a weekly reset in which Prophet described that when you pray the Jummah as if you come out as a newborn. Meaning what? That if your darajat was taken down five floors, you were on the 15th, you went down to 10th floor, Jummah will knock you back up. So these are immense blessings that the nation is filled with the rahmah of Allah It's people they use their dunya mind and say, I would be rather hammering some nails than coming in for Jummah. Doing some dunya thing but come get your Jummah and your Barakah and your salvation. That is the time in which Allah will reset your account. And if you don't need resetting it elevate your account and skyrocket the account to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because who gives the Jummah? When the ashiqeen they're making Jummah it's in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because every Jummah in paradise, the real Jummah is the Jummah of paradise which is in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad The people who are not ashiqeen they don't believe that. So we don't have to worry about them but ashiqeen they know the reality that the Jummah, Salatul Jummah, every Jummah on this earth is just an imitation, there's no Khalifa. They took the Khalifa out so we do the Jummah as an imitation. But more is the reality is the Jummah is in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad where all creation lines up to pray with Prophet That is an immense reset for the nation. So everything that tariqah is teaching, everything that Prophet brought and everything that tariqah teaches is to achieve these immense realities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Thank you for sharing the realities of frequencies. How can we counter the frequencies of a hyperactive mind even when we are doing all the practices the mind is always racing with thoughts? Yeah you have to train yourself to lower those thoughts with diet. Don't take caffeine when your mind is too active. There are things that are triggering the, the hyperactivity of the mind. So watch for the foods, the sugars, the caffeines, the diet is, is something that you have to implement so that to, to slow down the hyperactivity. Then the meditation and contemplation to bring a tranquility and, and a softness and a slowness to the character that when you feel the energy is like entering into the oceans of paradise. There's nowhere to go, you're just in the moment and in the energy. When you begin to feel that and build that relationship that should slow down that mind and the access that shaitan has to bring so close to a person to continuously whisper in their ear in which they become very manic and, and very nervous and agitated always, inshaAllah. 
So that's why all of the practices are answering all these questions, right? There's not a practice that we haven't discussed, it's just for you to relate that difficulty to what has already been discussed. So anything related to energy is going to be back to what? Why are you not reading the energy book and the meditation book? And build the connection. When you have the connection all these other issues will be resolved or at least understood. If you have a mental deficiency, it's a medical deficiency, everyone is given some sort of a medical difficulty, right? Everybody has a sickness, an ailment, something of a difficulty because that's Allah's way. Everybody has a bit of a handicap, nothing is completely perfect. And as a result everybody works through the handicap that Allah has given to them, they take their medicines, they do their practices. But if it's dietary and energy then you have to check the diet and do the practices of energy. But right now many people are not able to, uh, to what they call sensitivities to caffeine and sugar. And they have to be very careful about that and the ability of caffeine and sugar to make people manic and then to, to have feelings of disassociation. When they're not associating themselves with themselves, they don't feel present in their activities. So these are also dietary issues and meditate, contemplate and make a strong connection inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Is it that Allah just shows us everyone's true colors because of their behavior around us or is it that shaitan is coming against us as we are being heated? No, Allah doesn't disclose the colors of His servants, Allah Satar conceals His servants. So it's, it's more an understanding of oneself. What we see from ourself and our spiritual practices is that we see the en negative energies around us. And that's the… to see the outside and then understand inside. So when we see all the negativity around and we have spiritual practices then make us to be more vigilant of the negativity within us. So don't let that energy to come in, don't let bad things to come inside to defend oneself, do the zikrs, do the practices and keep building the connection and the light and all the power. Allah is not opening the heart of people so that we go out and judge His creation. So this is the nafs that wants to understand, I'm good, these people are bad and that not, that's not a good system, so we're not here to be judging people. We're here to purify ourselves and to serve people, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If one is doing their best to do the practices but lack the means to put reserves like money, gold aside, what is the best way to stay protected from outward difficulty? Yeah, if you, if you lack the means to put things aside, then everyone to their ability. Means that if you eat crackers, put some crackers aside, right? Doesn't mean I have to go find gold, I didn't even have gold, why I have to go out and find gold? Everyone to their level is, is the understanding that if you live from pay to pay then you put a little bit of your savings or put a little bit of your foods and groceries to the side in case something difficult comes and you can't run to the store or, or the stores become empty. So everyone to their ability. But these are for the talks for the people who, who they understand what's being said. They, they, they're amassing fortunes and they don't want to do charity. And they're not getting the things for security for their own homes to be safe and to be solid and to be secure and uh, things they're going to come crying. And they didn't make their bargain, they didn't, they didn't have the barakah of doing that in Allah's way. So that doesn't count as giving support, that just Allah took it. So that's the difference of somebody who believes, you get the credit of your belief, it goes to your hisab and your darajat is, is raised. But if Allah had to take it by force, 
There's no belief in that, there's no reward in that, that's just loss. That's the system, that's what we describe. So somebody's inspired, oh all our life was like that, oh give this and you come to yourself, alhamdulillah you move and you do it. The person who battles themselves, oh no, oh no way, no, 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 oh, maybe later. As soon as you did that, shaitan got to you. And then they get in a car and go home or something breaks and it was almost the exact amount that you were inspired to do. But that doesn't count. Don't say, okay, alhamdulillah Allah took it. No. no, that doesn't count at all towards your faith. That just means Allah's will will be done to show you Allah's izzah and might. But had He inspired you and you did according to inspiration means you're an inspired individual. When, when inspiration comes and you ignore it and a, a wood hits you, that doesn't mean you're inspired means you're somebody who requires a wood to hit you to get something done. That's not a good sign, that's you know that means like a path of difficulty. So the one whom is inspired they live all their life understanding a khatir comes they act on it and that becomes now the perfection of their faith that they go by all of the subtleties of their heart. And people around may not understand it, ridicule and mock it doesn't really they don't really care. But it's their heart becomes so subtle like a, a vibration that this wind of Allah's resonance hit the heart and they know what they have to do regardless of who, who, who and what, they don't care. And they have to follow that inspiration for the perfection of their heart and their character. If you live like that then imagine then all of the subsequent inspirations that will become that become now the subtle khatir and the subtle thoughts and angelic inspirations that come with knowledges and realities. But those don't come first, it's the hard ones that are nafsani and the nafs says, no, 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 no. Those are the ones that have to be conquered. Then when the heart is so subtle like a… like a… it's like a flower waiting for the breeze of Allah's lights then it, it awakens that heart for all sort of heavenly inspirations and talks and realities. But if it can't be inspired through the nafs, how would it ever achieve the inspirations of the soul? That's the, the problem. The shaitan is going to block all inspirations so that has to be completely destroyed. Then the nafsani ones where the nafs is like, oh no, 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 no. I'm not going to do Ramadan, no way, no way it's too long, no I can't do it, I'm not going to, oh no, no, no. They can't listen to that inspiration, InshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Thank you so much for this Sayyidi, you responded to so many questions we couldn't put into words to ask, thank you. Thank you, Allah bless you, alhamdulillah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. In muhasaba, should we name a certain bad character or sin when it is reoccurring but not so obvious? Yeah. You're right in your book anger, jealousy. Anger, jealousy. And you write it and then you understood it. You don't have to write it so many times, it's the same reoccurring. You say, I got to get rid of this character and every night you go through and say, well what caused that again? And you, your qadab and anger you have to pray Salatul Tahajjud, the du'a of Salatul Tahajjud and in, in the sujood of Tahajjud that asking Allah Ya Rabbi that my anger burning me like a piece of uh, firewood that take away this, this qadab, talk, you can talk in your own language to Allah that please Ya Rabbi as the, as the anger burns and is a fire, my anger is burning me like wood making me to be fiery and, and something of a jahannam nature. Ya Rabbi take away qadab, take away anger, take away these bad characteristics. And all of the wazifas of fajr that Mawlana Shaykh Sultanul Awliya put for us then do those wazifas and those awrads, all those practices. They're there to be practiced and to be recited. Each of those take away all the difficulties of that day inshaAllah.
inshaAllah. Reminder for the guys out there, anybody have inspirations for an app for questions? I know that our, our, our business people they have all of these different apps like I think they're using Asana for the articles. There must be apps that the people are using where the, the moderators can enter in all the questions and then they can prioritize them based on how important they think they are. And then the moderator and administrator come back and either say, no, no, no and then prioritize and then as we use them take them away. So maybe some of the tech people have uh, things that we haven't heard of or, or aren't aware of on how to sort of do that because we have from our emails, from TikTok, from YouTube, from all of these social media platforms we should be having a, a way to filter the questions coming in and then prioritize based on if they've been asked before. If, if they've been asked before then most likely we, we have to go to new subjects and subjects to keep our audience sort of informed. You don't want to keep repeating the same questions every, every time. So alhamdulillah inshaAllah they, they give us a way to, to do it and, and to, to have a, a system in which we can implement. What else we have? We have the Ramadan iftar programs. Please uh, anybody who wants to put iftar together that uh, you run it through the Canadian system. So the Canadian machine upstairs you run that through. All our people online they, if they're in the areas under the crown they can donate to the Canadian charities. Anywhere in the US charities they can donate to the US charities. Those are for the iftar programs they can do locally for iftar, local within their communities. And then these packages that are going out for India and Pakistan inshaAllah. Allah Zawajal dress everyone, bless everyone, keep everybody safe and sound and secure until we talk again by next week inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharifa Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam alayhi 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 wa sallam Khasat al ruh Imam Tariqa wa Abdul Khaliq Shah Naqshba Muhammad Waisa al Bukhari, Satuna Awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sada Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh al Shaykh Kabbani, Shaykh Adnan Kabbani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Ma Abdul Khaliq al Khujdawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah Sayyidina alayhi salam. Thumma Sayyidina Abaka Sadiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Al Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidatuna Fatima tazah alayhi salam. So ayru wa saddatina wa siddiqina al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.